Hello everyone, Jarrell from Sungrand here. I am a normal human being just like you, and I run my own game development studio. I make commercial and homebrew games, and today I want to look at the Beyond Good and Evil trailer that just launched a few hours ago. Now this is a remaster of a game that's around 20 years old, and I'm very impressed. The game is out now, it's available on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch, and I wanted to go over some of the details that I find interesting, some things that I like as a gamer, and things that impress me as a game developer. I am not very familiar with the original game, so I won't be discussing um, things related to the lore or, you know, comparing the original to the new, but I will um, discuss uh, some changes that I have seen as I've uh, researched the original a bit here. So, just out of the gate here, I want to let you know my prognosis on this. This is an excellent example of how a 20-year-old game should be remastered while adhering to the original vision of the product itself. Technology is only the canvas and paint with which we express ideas and vision. It's easy to not understand that concept and to either just copy and paste something or to take things too far and ruined the original, as we've seen, for example, with the GTA remasters. If you push too far, you can bastardize the product and you obfuscate the original vision, and that is not what has happened here. This remaster maintains the atmosphere and the vibe of a game from the early 2000s. It feels like it's from the early 2000s, but in a very good way. There's a distinct uh, feeling to any media that's produced in a particular era, especially for in the early 2000s, we were so influenced by things like The Matrix. So just in general, things like color palettes are going to be influenced by things like that. Then we had high fantasy hitting hard with Lord of the Rings. So much of the media that we see that, whether you can tell or not, they are influenced by those uh, just in terms of, of even things as simple as color palette, you know, the overall uh, atmosphere and spirit of things. So, um, so I'll get started into the details here. Something that I really like is that from the very beginning, the first things they show us, well, you can tell that this is a higher resolution than we would have seen uh, on in the original from 20 years ago, but they come out right and show us this really, really lovely scene here of the sun coming through the trees here, and I'll discuss some details in a little bit in the video. But what I wanted to point out was this great scene here with the water. We can see more modern implementation of real-time reflections on the water. We don't see sort of displacement in terms of the mesh as that probably wasn't part of the original. So they are working with the base um, product uh, and not taking things too far. Um, but I love this transition here. <laughs> this is such great editing for a trailer where that water splash cuts to the next scene. I thought that was really, really such an eye-catching way to start that trailer. So what is most important here in terms of uh, improvements is that this remaster is using advanced modern shaders. A shader is a part of the game code that tells the game engine how to render something and how it should look. So, um, in the past, in 20 years ago, uh, we would have used a method called vertex lighting or vertex lit, and that basically means each polygon, they can only be, um, lit individually in terms of lights uh, and color and intensity of lighting. Uh, we only saw that in terms of the, the actual uh, triangles being lit individually, and they can sort of soften that a bit, but a low poly count model would be very obvious. These days we're using um, pixel lighting, per pixel lighting, which means that they can have advanced uh, lighting and shading, uh, and you don't necessarily see the polygons anymore. And where that is most important, and you can see that, is around the 49 second mark. Uh, thanks to advanced uh, lighting and shading, uh, we have now normal maps. So normal mapping can define uh, the bumpiness of a texture, and you can see that here. You can see uh, the skin here. You can see how bumpy it is. You can see some uh, sort of an expression of veins there. You can see the roughness of the leather. And there is also a definition for specularity. So with modern shaders, we can define the bumpiness and also the shininess. And that means not just, you know, one part of the model is, has uniform uh, shininess or roughness. You can 
uh, have a texture that defines that in an interesting way to give it more sense of depth. So that is what we can see here is that you can see the buttons are very shiny. Uh, the leather has uh, a slickness to it while the shirt is not so shiny it overall gives much more visual depth and that is something that we have thanks to modern shaders while we've had that since about uh the playstation 3 or so but in the xbox and ps2 era that was not technology that was available so seeing this um taking modern technology like that and applying that to an older product that is an excellent way to improve uh the expression while not bastardizing the original vision and it's something that should be done more with remasters using more modern shaders just for expressiveness uh, we can also see a, a good example let's see i've marked a 103 here uh yeah and another just to make the point you can see it's this nice shininess on the armor uh, and you can see sort of the fibers on the texture now i have watched videos of actual gameplay since the game is out now and it actually looks better than this this trailer is lowballing the end product which i think is also a good idea uh, you can also see you know the detail in the uh, threads there it's it's really fantastic this is going outside of you know you expect it to be upscale all the textures have been upscaled of course um but i'll discuss that in in just a bit here we can see that character of uh, facial expressions and lip syncing is significantly improved over the original just in this small scene where you can see some uh, micro expressions from jade here and i think it gives it a sense of liveliness and it's so much more interesting in terms of storytelling but again it's not doing anything that breaks the original it's not stepping outside the bounds of the vision of the original and i think this is a very tasteful way to use modern technology for that something i really appreciate here is that the foliage is using modern shaders and it is simulating subsurface scattering now subsurface scattering occurs when light enters a material and the light bounce or an object and the light bounces around inside the surface of the object and then it comes back out and you can sort of see uh that effect here now this isn't real none of this stuff is real nothing's actually happening this is just uh expressing the idea of something happening and so this is expressing the idea of light coming in from this direction here and it's bouncing around inside the, the volume of the leaf and coming out the other side and it's this soft diffuse light and it's something that is extremely important with foliage uh if you the next time you're outside go ahead look up at the trees uh you know with the sun on the other side of the trees you'll see what i'm talking about and you know, it's it's so nice to just sit outside in a, in a chair and, and relax and enjoy some fresh air and, and just look at the trees and the clouds and you can see that kind of thing. And it's it's so great to see that in games and they do that early on in the trailer as well here. So this is something that games um, have been doing for a while now, but again, this was not available in the 2000s. This is quite uh, advanced, really. And there are degrees of how advanced and complex this effect can be. I think they're using quite a simple version of this just to maintain. Uh, they don't want to take things too far. They don't want to overtune it. Um, but you can see light shining through and it's just adds that bit of uh, dynamic and liveliness to the environment. It makes the foliage feel lively. So that's that's something I really like to see here. We're using uh, Bloom, and Bloom is something that's existed for a while, but again, on the Xbox and PlayStation 2, uh, that is not necessarily something that was used. Um, Bloom really came in around the PlayStation 3. It, it There may have been games using it very late in the PlayStation 2 lifespan, and now that I think about it, um, but it would have been very late. But it became common... Uh, widely used in PlayStation 3. So we have an example, a, a clear example of, of Bloom. Um, where did I have the 107 mark? Yeah, you can see it in quite a few places, see here, uh, where Bloom sort of takes the highlights and it blends it and it makes it uh, have this soft halo to it that gives it this we this is such a, a signature look in the industry now we've had this for so long but when it's not there it looks quite jarring because you have a sharp line without the bloom and it's just a, a harsh uh, uh definition of polygons and it's not that pleasant to look so bloom softens that and it builds the sense of sort of being blinded by a surface that is too bright and it's quite it's quite tactfully used here it's not overly done you tend to see games overly use it when we had the trend of hd 2d rpgs like octopath traveler they cranked bloom up to like 
<laughs> 13 out of 10. And it, it's hard for me to look at games like that. It's, it's, um, I don't understand why they want to crank the bloom up that high. To some people, they like that look. It's like this soft, dreamy look. But for me personally, it's not something that, that I respect when you just crank it up too much. Um, and lastly, um, Oh, two more things here. So the audio, it seems to uh, be really, really nice and clean here. It's nice and clear. So audio in the early 2000s tended to be pretty uh, high-end focused. And when you listen to a game from the early 2000s, they tend to be a bit tinny and thin. They, they focus on the high end. Um, our technology changes over the decades. Our uh, sort of the, the commonly... Uh, accepted setup for speakers in terms of TVs and sound systems. They, I think they were a little bit on the, on the high end side in the early two thousands, uh, compared to these days where we have a much more robust, robust, uh, spectrum for expression of sound. So back then, uh, I, I have seen, um, the original game and it, it, I think it sounds a bit thinny, whereas this, the audio is remastered to sound more full. Uh, so I can respect the effort that they put there. And lastly, uh, is something that is extremely important to me, and it's it's probably one of the most important things. If they've they've remastered uh, every single texture in the game, so they've done a significant amount of work here to ensure that there is consistency with pixel density. And what I mean by that is that you don't have certain parts of your game where it's clearly uh, a lower resolution texture and you can actually see the pixels while something directly next to it is extremely high resolution. It is very jarring. Um, unfortunately, many, many modern games have that problem where it's a sign of a lack of care and incompetence. And in this situation, it shows that the developers have strong competence, they have an understanding of pixel density, and they have shown immense effort and care in the product that they've produced here. So I respect the developers, not just the original developers, but the ones who have remastered this and brought this to the Switch. The performance looks quite smooth, uh, but again, attention to detail with all of that is something that I can really respect. And what really aggravates me as a gamer, and it just frustrates me to no end as a developer, is when I see huge products that pay no attention and no, they display no competence for understanding pixel density. Something that really frustrates me is the Final Fantasy V and VI, um, I wouldn't call them remasters, I'm going to call them demasters. So the Final Fantasy V and VI demasters for Android and iOS are the clearest examples of incompetence when it comes to pixel density. You have environments where the pixels are huge and you can very see it has low pixel density and then you have environments that have moderate pixel density and then you have UI elements that have very high pixel density. So everything is just a mess. It's visually incoherent. It just displays incompetence and lack of care. Uh, and that is not what we see here. We see immense care and very strong competence in this remaster. I can appreciate the changes that they've done here to improve the expressiveness of the game. On the other end of the spectrum, I did want to make a video about the Donkey Kong Country announcement from the recent Nintendo Direct, but I had nothing to say um, because that Donkey Kong Country is on the opposite end of the spectrum where they did not make any improvements and they didn't take advantage of the technology available to them they showed no care in improving the expressiveness of the game the donkey kong country that we saw in the nintendo direct is just a copy and paste job i i don't like being negative i don't like saying negative things especially when it comes to other developers but to me that shows that their mandate was just copy and paste it and you don't have the budget to improve anything uh and that's a bummer for me because it's a missed opportunity. So that's all I wanted to discuss for today. I hope this was interesting to you. I recently just launched a new game on the Nintendo Switch eShop. It's called Clasher Ball. You can feel free to check that out if you want. I did also launch that on the PS Vita for free. And that's available on the itch.io. So I'll put the link to that in the description if you'd like to see my game Clasher Ball. Gotta take care of my fellow PS Vita fans. So thanks very much for watching the video. I have a video coming up for Dragon Quest three hd 2d remaster coming up so hopefully um that'll be up in, in maybe 12 hours or so thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed that take care of yourselves everyone and um tell your mom i said thanks for last night <laughs>